Hello again. I saw in the newspaper the other day that 15 out of the 46 police forces operating in the United Kingdom now have women as chief constables. This situation has arisen with startling rapidity. I provide a link in the description to this video to a BBC News item from exactly a year ago which announced that Sussex had just become the third police force in Britain to appoint a woman as chief constable. That means that in the space of just 12 months, another dozen forces have replaced their male chief constables with women. I do not believe for a moment that this is just natural wastage, as one might put it, of chief constables retiring or changing jobs. Nor do I think that it is sheer chance that all these men have been replaced by women over such a short period. It is clearly part of a plan. Whether we feel it to be a good idea or not, I am sure that we are all well aware that there is a drive to make sure that women take half the important jobs in the country, from MPs to managing directors, chief constables to school heads, army officers to engineers, doctors and scientists. The appointment of so many fe female chief constables is simply part of this trend. Now, I don't personally doubt that women are every bit as intelligent and capable as men. I hope this goes without saying. Men and women are, however, different. And this is why I'm a little uneasy about having them running police forces or army units. When I say that men and women are different, I'm not saying that this is necessarily a good thing. I'm just stating it as an easily observable fact. Nor am I expressing any opinion as to why this should be so, whether the differences are innate, at hardwired into the brain, or merely traits which are acquired as children grow up in a sexist society. The fact is that there are differences. To give one example, women are usually more eager to avoid confrontation than men and to find a compromise which will lower tensions and be less likely to result in violence. I dare say this is a, something we've all seen in our lives. And again, I don't say whether it's a good thing or not. Some people say that having women in charge of police forces or armies would make the society and the world as a whole more peaceful and calm. But in fact, the opposite is true, which is why I'm not particularly keen on the business. Giving in to bullies and trying to defuse a situation can look like weakness and that can actually have the effect of creating more violence. When Carmen Best was appointed Chief of Police in the American city of Seattle in 2018, there were high hopes that having a woman at the top would usher in a new and gentler kind of policing. She would not go in for the gung-ho and macho behaviour to which so many men are prone. She actually succeeded another woman. Um, at the top, who had been Seattle's first female chief of police, and that seemed to work out reasonably okay, and it was thought that Carmen Best, being not only a woman but a black woman, it all looked as though it might be really promising for having a more peaceful and uh, civilised city. During the riots which swept the United States in the wake of George Floyd's death, there was widespread disorder, which was combined with great anger against the police. In one district of Seattle, the Capitol Hill area, the police station was besieged and had to be defended like a military outpost in hostile territory. As a woman, conflict and violence was abhorrent to calm and best, and so she took a decision which was unprecedented in American policing. She ordered the evacuation of the police station and the surrender of it and the surrounding street to the mob. She said that she did this to de-escalate the situation. Such an order had never before been given by a police chief and we can be fairly sure that no man would have taken such a step. 
Now, surrendering to an unruly mob and letting them have their own way will have many different results, but one of them will not be a de-escalation of violence or a lessening of disorder. In effect, a no-go zone for the police was created. I need not talk about the shootings, murders and rapes which took place once the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone has been established. I'm sure that we know it was not an unalloyed success, at least for ordinary law-abiding people, that is. It was great for the drug dealers and pimps. This then can be the difficulty when women are in charge. Their instinct for peaceful resolution can actually make things worse. Sometimes it's the very fact that a leader is unpredictable and liable to resort to violent action which can be instrumental in keeping the peace. We remember Jimmy Carter when he was President of the United States. A decent, peace-loving man, always ready to be reasonable. America's enemies took all kinds of liberties such as seizing the hostages in Tehran and, of course, the Russians invaded Afghanistan, the legacy of which we are still dealing with over 40 years later. When Ronald Reagan came to power, things changed dramatically because there was no doubt at all of his capacity for war and willingness to uh, take violent action. As a consequence, of course, the Soviet Empire collapsed. I have an idea that if women become generals, then the same thing would happen, that a desire for peace would end up provoking war. On the subject, by the way, of women police chiefs in Britain, I've noticed that Cressida Dick, who is in charge of the police in London, sports half a dozen medals, which puzzled me. In the 1960s and 70s, one would see police officers with ribbons on their chests indicating that they had won medals during the Second World War. But where on earth did Cressida Dick win medals? The answer is, of course, that they're all nonsense. One is because she happened to be in the police during the Queen's Golden Jubilee and another one, similar, for the Diamond Jubilee. Then there's a Good Conduct Medal and one for Distinguished Service as well as an OBE. In other words, she was given these medals just for being in the police for a long time. As late as 19, uh, 1987, we ha actually had a commissioner of police for the metropolis with real medals. This was Kenneth Newman, who served with the secret police with the British Army of Occupation in Israel. He had the 1939-45 war medal, among others. How times change! <laughs>